we're gonna do a deep dive into Klaviyo's deliverability reporting function from a campaign perspective. From this video, you'll just get a better idea of what metrics to look at, what's important, how you can use those metrics, and some strategies to improve those. So stick around to the end of the video because that's where I will be going over those strategies. All right, let's do this. So as you can see here, we are looking at the deliverability tab within this campaign that went out on the 8th of August. Now, straight off the bat, you can see some pretty cool numbers here. This is showing the open rates, the click rates, the bounce rate, unsubscribe rate, and the spam complaint rate. And Klaviyo actually gives you where you're sitting in relation to the rest of the industry. Now, this is just a really quick snapshot of where you need to improve and basically just gives you some really high level information when it comes to looking at these numbers. Now, you can also take a look at how things are playing out in regards to the inbox provider. For example, Gmail is currently making up the bulk of where our emails are going to. Hotmail is down there as well, Verizon Media Group, and then you just get some really odd miscellaneous ones. Like I don't even know what Big Pond actually is, and that's just because I'm ignorant but nonetheless, it's new to me. You can also see the domains and how they are showing here. Now, what you can do with this information here is if you're seeing a very high bounce rate for a particular segment or domain, what you can do is you can filter or create a segment of those people with that domain in Klaviyo and exclude them from your campaigns down the road, at least for a temporary amount of time, if you are trying to seriously improve your deliverability and you're trying to get out of the spam folder. For example, if a lot of these emails were going to spam, we were getting incredibly high bounce rates, which does contribute to high spam complaint rates or just being put in the spam folder, what I would do is I'd create an engaged segment and then I'd also create a segment of people that are bouncing or people that are in the Hotmail browser, for example, if Hotmail was bouncing quite high. And I would exclude them from the campaign as time goes on and then gradually introduce them back into the campaign as we increase our sending. You can also see a breakdown in terms of where things are bouncing and being delivered from a country perspective. Once again, if you're a brand, for example, that doesn't even sell to Canada or doesn't even sell to the United Kingdom and you don't really want to be A, communicating with them or B, paying for their, their profiles or C, just actually, uh, well, once again, and not even really communicating with them, you can go ahead and exclude them uh, within your campaigns. And then down here, you can also get another look, positive engagements and negative engagements, which is quite self-explanatory, nice and easy to understand. Negative engagements count as bounce rate, unsubscribe rate, and spam complaint rate. Uh, and then positive engagements are click rates and open rates, or clicks and opens. Once again, a useful tool if you wanna figure out how to improve your deliverability and dial in those sending uh, strategies and improve it overall. Performance by country, once again, same thing, pretty self-explanatory. Performance by email client as well, uh, which just once again allows you to see if it's a desktop or a mobile and breaks it even further down. And as you can see here, this client is quite split in terms of who's opening the emails and where those browsers are coming from. So we have a portion coming from desktop and then a pretty even portion coming from mobile. Nonetheless, you should be optimizing for these two devices, but what you can use this information for is you can figure out or even add some personalization. For example, saying, hey, if you're opening this email from mobile, uh, have a mobile only segment or something like that. Now, nice and easy. Now, <clears throat> what Klaviyo also does is it also gives you a guide just to show you how to troubleshoot your um, your essentially how to improve your click rates, which is very generic guides or anything like that. But now some strategies and how I would use this report for my email campaigns and what I would do. First of all, I would take it like the, a look at the the uh, the most important metrics, right? Which I think, at least in my mind, for an account that's just starting off, it's these: it's the spam complaint rate and the unsubscribe rate, right? So what I would be looking at doing is taking this data and discerning what that actually means. A, is my content bad? B, are my emails not designed properly? C, is the list just crap? Do I need to clean the list up a little bit? Do I need to adjust the segments that I'm sending to? And then once I dial those things in, I then move over to the bounce. I'd be more aggressive with my filtering of my bounces, bounced emails. Obviously this isn't a huge issue here as we are quite healthy. Following that, then I'd also look at the open rate, right? Well, rather, I look at the open rate first and then look at the click rate secondly because 
your click rates are going to be crap if your open rates are crap, but your open rates aren't necessarily going to be crap if your click rates are good, if that makes sense. So what I'd be looking at doing here is using this information to figure out, okay, how do I create more compelling subject lines? Is it personalization? Is it adjusting when I'm sending the emails? That could be a potential thing there. Is it preview text I need to adjust? I've also seen some really good success with unconventional subject lines, which I've actually made a video about before. Go through my channel, check that one out. On top of that, I'd then look at the click rates, right? Now click rates are very important, but it's not necessarily the first thing I'd tackle if these were all other issues as well. Click rates, what I typically do to improve those is I essentially A, try and figure out better offers within the emails. Perhaps the offers are not very good. And then C, do the call to actions need to be adjusted? Am I using compelling call to actions? Are they short, punchy, and verb slash doing words uh, that are encouraging people to click through? If they're not those, or if they're not those, first I'm gonna switch that over. If they are those though, then I need to start split testing colors, designs, perhaps even adding urgency to the emails themselves and seeing how that's gonna improve the overall email. But essentially what this allows you to do really gives you a quick snapshot of how the campaign's doing. And then if you want to get a holistic view of how your campaigns as a whole are doing, you jump into an overall benchmark report as well, which we can see if I jump into here, benchmarks, we'll go into here, and this gives you a much better view of where you are sitting. First of all, if you haven't selected your industry, go ahead and select your industry. So in this case, we are uh, footwear. So we're going to call this uh, health and beauty. And we're going to go, if we can find it, fitness and wellness, access benchmarks. And then what it's going to do is compare it according to the rest of the industry. I think it's still going to take some time to actually load. What you can see here is essentially from a campaign perspective where we're sitting in relation to the rest of the industry. Now, this is a new client, so we're just working on all this stuff for them. But nonetheless, this is where I would really take a more holistic macro view of the account as opposed to that micro view that we just went through for the individual campaign. Whereas looking at this gives us a high level view of the overall campaign. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I respond to every single comment. If you wanna learn more about me, check out the LinkedIn, the Instagram, the Tinder, and my website, and we'll go from there.